I think that as Bill pointed out in, in the regional, I was not there, unfortunately. I was invited, but I couldn't go to Africa. Um, but I saw it in Latin America. We had a strong focus on development, but I haven't seen it in, in the big IGF. I, I really don't see, I, as we had the, the idea of a cross-cutting theme for development. I really don't see it in the general discussions. I don't see it present in, in the main sessions. I even have, I, I'm surprised that many people uh, put figures about uh, penetration of services and a lot of things, and they just don't include Latin America. <laughs> Maybe the numbers are small, but they just skip the, some regions. I, I've noticed uh, intensely that our region is, is really missed. So um, I think that perhaps, and we discussed this yesterday in a, in a very interesting workshop, uh, I think development is, is something that could be uh, an improvement in, in, in the general IGF. Thank you. Um, I'll give you some numbers on Latin America because we're doing a lot of work on that. But I actually think uh, the, the the phrase workshop is almost a misnomer because, unfortunately, of the physical structure. And I think as we look towards Egypt, if we actually want to have workshops, you wouldn't shine lights in the eyes of the people here. Um, we'd be able to see you better, so I hope they can turn the lights up in the room. Um, and in fact, we would be looking at things like development. And I'll give a very concrete example. Last year on the Going Forward panel, um, I raised the question of uh, how can you get more spectrum for wireless broadband um, as part of a transition from analog to digital television in order to extend the reach of broadband in rural areas, unserved areas, underserved areas. Um, it's the part of the access question. How do you uh, facilitate licensing, getting more licenses out there? How do you drive um, the, the, the reach of the platform? That's only half of the problem, right? Once it's there, it's getting people to use it, comfortable with it, having prices uh, low enough so people adopt getting uh, devices out there this year, but now we have netbooks and net tops, which actually are reducing that. These are some very pragmatic things that are frankly not related to the kind of policy discussions that would lead to the sort of the soft policy debate, which is, these are not in conflict. These are mutually reinforcing. Um, it's a separate discussion. How do you actually get the internet to everybody? And there's some very pragmatic things that can be done. And so going forward, I think one of the values of IGF is actually to focus workshops on those kinds of very pragmatic things because that's what we want. We, everybody should be, in, it's an inclusive internet, right? It's not, and frankly, a lot of the issues are becoming less and less related to policy. I mean, they are clearly. If you talk about spectrum, spectrum policy, how do you make it available? How do you get it out there? How do you do that quickly? Um, and so there clearly are, are, are issues, but I think if, if we try to focus more pragmatically on solving problems together and solving those issues to get the internet out to everybody, I think that would be a, uh, sort of the next step. Parminder? Yeah, thank you, Lee. I would have, uh, I would, I would have responded to the uh, suggestions for improvement of IGF come forward, uh, but um, I think I have to first respond to an idea I just heard now, which is one of the most dangerous ideas I've ever, ever heard, that a funding mechanism should be used as a feedback uh, system for a public policy body. And I did say earlier that we, if we are to be an IGF, first we need to believe in public policy and public bodies. And I don't think, how can anybody think about financing being a feedback mechanism for keeping a public body alive, and I would like uh, ISOC or Bill to respond on what really is meant uh, by saying that funding should be considered as a feedback mechanism. I'm clearly and strongly for a publicly funded model for anything which is public. There is a big difference between a public body and a corporate, and I think it's time we start understanding that difference. There are actually rumors flying thick that there was at one point uh, by certain members from within the IGF, a proposal to withdraw support, withdraw funding, not support, if some things are done or some things are not done. And I think it's extremely dangerous, and I can give you the absolute um, word that if IGF does not clearly come out and says that it would not use funding as a basis of deciding agenda, 
a big part or the large part of civil society would simply walk out of the IGF. Thank you. I think Bill. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm not suggesting that there should be no government funding for this by any means or no public funding for this, uh, but I am suggesting that the funding needs to be multi-stakeholder. The entire IGF process in my mind, and, and I'm not putting this forward as an official ISOC position, by the way. Uh, we haven't had any, any discussion about it. This is, this is my view. Um, I really feel that by engaging people at the level of providing resources, it really does tell us that, uh, that the job is being well done going forward. I do recall that uh, offer to withdraw funding if certain things were not done. Uh, there's a lot of emotional talk in this environment, as you very well know, Parminder, and people will say things that they, uh, they later come to regret. The person who said that later came to regret it, and, and so I don't think it's too serious. You just pick up and move forward. But, you know, absolutely, the, the biggest funders of this at this point are governments providing public funds. There's, there's no question about that. And I think they are, they are probably the most concentrated source of funds among the stakeholders here. It's still a very small number of governments who are funding it, and I think that tells us that governments are not uh, as deeply engaged in this process as it should be. I w that was the point I was going to make uh, to start, is that one of the real weak areas with the IGF moving forward is the lack of participation and the lack of awareness by governments. Uh, we don't see a lot of developing country governments here. Partly that's an issue of resources. Partly it's an issue of those of us who are here from, uh, from different countries. We probably are not doing as good a job as we could at going back home, telling our national governments how important this is, getting them engaged at the national level and moving that up to the, uh, the global level. Because I really feel, paradoxically, this was created, the IGF was created by the WISIS, by what was essentially an intergovernmental uh, statement, the Tunis Agenda. And yet, the strongest participation by far is from the civil society uh, and the, uh, the business community. The governments are, are the much in the minority here. That's fine from the perspective of debate, but it, doesn't, uh, it means that what we do here is not as likely to be taken up uh, at the national level, level where the real power exists. So I think a responsibility we have to take on as participants is uh, bringing the message back from the IGF that there is value, there is value for governments, and you, as my government, should be participating here. Um, I'm also going to uh, make some comments on uh, Bill Graham's point about funding, which I actually agree with in part. I agree that funding is a problem. I don't think it's necessarily always the amount of funding, but it's how the funding's directed. Um, Two nights ago, we had uh, a very wonderful gala evening, um, which I'm sure most of you attended, with lavish food, drink, and entertainment. Um, but I personally would have been quite happy if, uh, if half of that funding had been directed away from food and entertainment and into improvement of the IGF's processes. And in particular, I think we can take a, a leaf out of um, the book of some of the other internet governance institutions, such as ICANN and the IATF, um, who provide for a better set of processes throughout the year in between their annual meetings. Um, for example, ICANN has um, mailing lists that are automatically translated into multiple languages. They also have phone conferences in multiple languages uh, with, with translation, and this allows them to carry on a work program throughout the year. The IETF is also renowned for being able to produce many tangible outputs throughout the year without the need of all its participants uh, meeting together in person. So um, personally, I would like to see more fun less funding being directed to the annual meeting uh, and more funding being directed to the intercessional processes. 